What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Wrestling with Jonners. This is episode 89, and this is a special episode for two reasons. Uh, Going to be interviewing a very special guest all the way from uh, from Florida over in the States, who uh, I'll be introducing very, very soon. Uh, but also, this is our special Christmas edition as well. So uh, um, as you hear this, this will be dropping on Boxing Day, December the 26th. So Merry Christmas to all of our fans and listeners uh, out there in podcast land. Uh, and I hope you, that you enjoy uh, the interview that I have lined up very, very soon. But before we introduce our guest and this very special Christmas edition of Wrestling With Jonas, um, as I like to do, especially if you're a new listener to the Wrestling With Jonas podcast, I like to throw out my social media plugs so you know where to find us. Reach out to us, say hi, or just get in touch and ask any questions. So first of all, we're on Twitter, and you can find us on Twitter at withjohners underscore pod. That's at withjohners underscore pod. On Instagram as well, you can find us there, instagram.com forward slash wrestling with Johnners. And of course, go out and search and find our fun, friendly, interactive, and very popular Facebook community page. And just search Wrestling with Johnners on Facebook, and that's Johnners spelled J-O-H-N-E-R-S. And of course, if you enjoy listening to this podcast, please don't forget to hit subscribe so that you can be notified every time a new episode drops. Uh, you can find the Wrestling With Jonas podcast on all popular podcast platforms, including Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean and YouTube. So please spread the word and uh, give us a follow on all of our social media pages and subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channels, of course. Uh, so now on to my special guest. Uh, if you're watching this on, on YouTube, you can probably see him there. Uh, now I want to introduce one of the biggest characters uh, coming out of the the Florida independent wrestling scene right now. He's a former Coastal Championship Wrestling Southern Champion. He's a former Coastal Championship Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. He's the brilliant, uh, very flamboyant and charismatic Cha Cha Charlie. So Charlie, Merry Christmas to you. How are you, sir? Good, good. Merry Christmas to you too. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Uh, wrestling with honor is going to be a good one. It really is. And we're, we're really, really happy to have you on this podcast. And it's the final episode of 2019. So it's a bit of a, a celebration and it's really great to have you on. And uh, yeah, I mean, you, uh, since you uh, you reached out to me and we, we've become friends on Facebook and uh, I feel like I know you already, to be honest with you, Charlie, but I can't wait to ask you all the wonderful questions that I have for you so that my listeners can get to know you um, as well as I feel I know you. But um First of all, Charlie, with this being a, a Christmas uh, edition, um, I need to ask you a little bit about uh, your any Christmas traditions you might have, what Christmas means to you and to your family, and uh, do you have any Christmas traditions or any kind of things you like to do over Christmas with, with your family, and what, what, what does Christmas mean to you? I'm sure it's a very special occasion. Yeah, it's a very special day and uh, uh, occasion. Uh, normally, I meet up with my family, the whole family meets up, uh, we exchange gifts, uh, you know, we meet up on Christmas and then Christmas morning, we all like, exchange the gifts. Uh, you know, I love giving uh, the, the gifts, toys, all, all that different type of things to my family, especially uh, all the kids, uh, you know, looking at their smiles and, and their joy. Uh, that means a lot to me. And uh, I, I love Christmas. It's my favorite holiday. And uh, I just love giving. I like receiving gifts too, but um, oh yeah, oh yeah, don't we all? <laughs> most importantly, the you know the smiles on the kids. Uh, you know, the, I'm their favorite uncle, not only because I give them good gifts, but I'm also Cha Cha Charlie, right? You know. <laughs> Indeed, and who want who wouldn't want to have Cha Cha Charlie there around the Christmas table on uh, December the 25th? But uh, uh, yeah, Christmas uh, means a lot to me as well. Uh, I've got children, love to celebrate Christmas, and it's not just one day for us. It's kind of a, a whole week or leading up to New Year's. You could say of celebration and meeting family and good food, good friends, and, and like I say, the gifts are important as well. But uh, so, Charlie, um, a lot of my research done on you, sir, was was on YouTube, and uh, you pointed me in the direction of your very own YouTube channel, which you call uh, Cha Cha Charlie TV, and you've got a lot of wonderful content on there that uh, certainly uh, helped me get to know you better. But uh, it's, it's a lot of things on there, like your, your smart vlogs and uh, a lot of uh, interesting things that kind of not only open the world to Cha Cha Charlie, but introducing us to a lot of the other characters that wrestle uh, for you and, and with you and CCW. But uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Cha Cha Charlie TV on YouTube. When did it all get started and uh, kind of what sort of content can we expect on there? Well, yeah, so originally I went to school for film production. So, uh, you know, I have, my background is film production. I know how to edit. I know how to, you know, uh, I'm a cameraman originally. Um, I, I, I edit all my product. Uh, so um, I started my own channel on YouTube, uh, Tattoo Charlie TV. 
Uh, so I started putting all my matches in there. I started editing some of my stuff. And, um, you know, as it grew, as the subscribers got, got bigger, I'm like, you know what, let me give a little bit of everything uh, to, to all my viewers. So not only about me, because, you know, it's, it's not only about me, it's about everyone else. So um, yeah. uh, we showcase um, the other talent, uh, you know, because uh, there's a lot of good talent out here. And uh, it's only right that they get exposed every way possible. Uh, and, and why not do it on the platform of my my channel? So um, you'll see a little bit of everything. You'll see a lot of Tata Tardy stuff. Mo Every time I could put up my my uh, my wrestling matches, uh, if if I get it, you know, uh, I'll put it on my channel. But um, but you anything that I'm involved in, uh, like if I'm in a in a in a match or in a in, in one of those um, events, if I could get a hold of the, the the tape, I'll put it on my channel, and um and you could get you get to see other talent. Um, yeah, smart tons of good stuff on there, Charlie. There really is tons of good stuff, and I, I enjoyed uh, the hell out of a lot of the stuff you had on there. But uh, speaking of, of kind of wrestling and uh, uh, watching wrestling, I'm guessing that uh, you wouldn't be a professional wrestler without first having been a professional wrestling fan. So I want to ask you about kind of your, your, your love for professional wrestling, your wrestling fandom, we could say. Uh, when did you first kind of get hooked on wrestling? Was it, was it at a young age? Uh, if so, kind of, can you recall that, that first moment that really kind of uh, zapped you really and kind of pulled you in to professional wrestling? Um, my uncle's a wrestler uh, in the Dominican Republic. He used to wrestle with um, against the world famous uh, Jack Veneno, who's uh, the most famous wrestling Dominican wrestler. Uh, he used to be his opponent. His name was uh, La Momia. Um, so it's in my blood. Um, I start, I've been watching wrestling since I was born. Uh, so I love wrestling. It's it's again it's in the blood. Um, I grew up watching Hulk Hogan, Bret Hart, uh, The Undertaker, uh, Andre the Giant. Um, the, you know, that, that's my era, you know, the 80s, 90s. Uh, and I still yeah. watch it till, till yeah. today. Um, I'm a fan first. And then, you know, if, um, you know, then Tata Tardy, the character, is, is, is next. Yeah. So, I mean, talking of the, the current wrestling scene, and you're part of that current wrestling scene uh, on the independent scene uh, within Florida, of course. And we, we'll talk more about some of the places you wrestled very, very soon. But um, uh, what, what sort of promotions uh, do you enjoy watching? Do you get any kind of off days where you can go to wrestling events or do you like to watch any of the current mainstream products on the TV? Uh, I do. Uh, I'm enjoying AEW a lot right now. Uh -huh. uh, uh, it's it's actually my my cup of tea is uh, what I watch normally. Uh, I, I still watch the WWE NXT. I watch a little bit of everything, but uh, I'm enjoying the AEW product. Uh, it's entertaining me. Uh, I like Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho is great. Yeah, uh, he's, the uh, champion. He's <laughs> on. A little bit of that bubbly. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, AEW, I mean, yeah, AEW is uh, definitely the, the hot uh, wrestling promotion at the moment, putting out some fantastic stuff. And uh, yeah, I've got to say, deep down in my heart, uh, I'm an NXT guy, uh, but I grew up much like yourself watching the likes of Bret Hart and The Undertaker, Hulk Hogan uh, back in the 80s and 90s and into the 2000s, a big WWF fan. But uh, please continue. I think I cut you off there. I do apologize. Yes, yeah, so um, yeah, I, I watch a little bit of everything. I, I tend to go to when I'm not wrestling. If there's a, a show, a local show available, I'll, I'll go and watch and support. Um, you know, whenever they come in town, I also try to go to the, the shows as well. Um, so yeah, you know, I love wrestling. Uh, it, it's a part of me. It's in your blood, like you told us earlier. It's in your blood. Uh, but um, t tell us, so moving on from being a fan, um, you obviously had that kind of little spark, that uh, spark of inspiration that that uh, gave you that desire to want to become a professional wrestler. So when when did you kind of first think about becoming a wrestler? And then when did you first get involved in training to become a, a professional wrestler, Charlie? Yeah, I, I wish I could have started at a, at a younger age. Um, I started late. Uh, the reason so um, the, the opportunity got presented to me where um, uh, I was just filming the shows, uh, you know, uh, they hired me to, to be a cameraman and to edit the, the actual show. Um, and then uh, while I was there, I'm like, man, I, I should be doing this. I, I should be in the ring. So like, you know, my goosebumps were going. I was like, man, I, I really want to be in here. So then I, I spoke to the coach, the promoter, Pablo Marquez. Uh, we worked out a deal, you know, he taught me how to wrestle and I uh, started doing his videos. And uh, from there, 
the magic clicked and uh, and and Tata Tardy was born. No looking back, eh? No looking back. So, uh, and then, uh, am I right in saying that uh, you're most closely associated with CCW Coastal Championship Wrestling, based in Florida, as we've mentioned? Um, but uh, am I right in thinking that CCW also have their own uh, training school or training facilities for younger up-and-coming talent in the Florida area? Uh, that must be really a good kind of facility and a good tool to have, kind of on their on your doorstep, really, for up-and-coming wrestlers and uh, you know for any young talent that wants to get involved in professional wrestling yes uh ccw uh, has been around for almost uh 15 or 16 years yeah. um so they are the longest running promotion in south florida um they, uh, the ccw main event training center run by pablo marquez and dan evans uh pablo marquez uh, he used to be an ecw legend he was in the wwe he's uh he's the top trainer on here right now and uh you know if you want to become a pro wrestler a referee a, a ring announcer uh, we CCW is the place to go. Um, our schools open Mondays, Wednesdays, Sundays, uh, and you know if you need some personal training and you want to advance in your career, um, all you gotta do is talk to Pablo. Pablo is a, is a great tutor, mentor, and uh, he's gonna guide you in the right right way. Yeah, and so did the the, the training school with CCW were they uh, quite helpful in training you as a professional wrestler was that how you first got started was through the training school that ccw had yeah yeah that's where i that's where i go to that's my go-to um that's where i started uh again pablo marquez he you know there's always going to be up and downs and but pablo marquez is there from from the beginning we see something in you uh he's, he's going to be there till the end and um and yeah, I mean, this is something that's not easy, uh, but you just got to keep your mind, got to keep focused. And, and if this is what you really want to do, you know, sky's the limit. You just got to keep pushing forward and uh, don't look back. Just just keep going. Yeah. Well, were there any kind of any days whilst you were training that you kind of thought, that's it. I've had enough. Too many bumps. It hurts too much. Uh, <laughs> did, did, did you have days like that, Charlie? Yeah, my first years, um, you know, when, when I got started, uh, you know, it was bringing problems to, to my family. You know, they didn't want me doing this. Uh, they didn't want me to get hurt. Um, but, um, you know, I, I stopped a little bit. But again, I kept getting that call, phone call from, from Pablo. Like, uh, he kept on calling me, where, where are you, daddy? Where are you, daddy? We need you. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was like, you know what? I really want this. I'm going to keep going. But, yeah, you know, I, I, with this, you will get injuries. You will get hurt. Uh, but that's the part of the game. And um, again, if you could keep going, don't stop. And um, and now I'm here. I, I didn't think I was gonna make it this far, and um, and and now I'm having fun with it. And and I want to go further with this. Indeed, yeah, I I can see you going all the way, Charlie. But uh, so so you you must have been training for uh, quite a few months before you first stepped into the ring. Can you remember your first professional wrestling match and uh, take us back to that that day? I think uh, we spoke off air and you said it was maybe five years ago that you since you started uh, since you uh, wrestled your first match since you become a pre professional wrestler. Do you remember that first match and were you nervous before you stepped through them ropes? Uh, kind of take us back to that day five years ago. Yeah, well, um, I, I've been training and wrestling for, for about five years. Um, I didn't really get into the ring until like a year and a half or, or two years within. Uh, but my first match was with uh, Mark, Mad Dog. Uh, um, he started with me, so, you know, it was, it was only right that we wrestled together. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, was, it was a good experience. We kept it simple, you know, not, not, not doing too much. Uh, Tata, the Tata Tardy character wasn't born yet, but um, uh, it helped me a lot. It helped me overcome, um, you know, my, my nervousness, my what if I was scared. Uh, it, you know, it was a good experience. And then after that, we did the big show. Um, uh, the, you know, uh, we did a few battle royals. Uh, Pablo Marquez would always throw you in a battle royal before you get started. So, uh, you know, first you do the battle royals. Once you're ready to, to, to get in the ring, then he'll put you out there. Uh, so yeah, that, my my first encounters were were uh, against my friend uh, Mark Mad Dog and um, also the Battle Royals, and then I started a feud with um, with, with the Drugs, which um, you'll see it on my channel if you want to go back all the way back. That was probably my that's when Tata Tardy was born. Uh, Tata Tardy oh, yeah. uh, versus the Drugs, um, and 
that, that, was, that was the big day right there. The yeah. big payoff. So I want to talk to you a little bit about your wrestling style now, Charlie. So um, how would you describe your wrestling style? Now, I've seen quite a few of your matches uh, uh, leading into this interview. And, uh, you know, you... you, you you do. Um, you are quite a, a fast-paced wrestler. Uh, you do your dives through the ropes, but at the same time, you like to tell a story with your wrestling as well. I, I can tell that you you do like to slow things down and sell a sto- tell a story with your opponent. Um, so you do kind of mix it up a little bit with with the slow-paced and then sometimes the fast-paced. But how would you describe your wrestling style, Charlie? Yeah, I give you a little bit of everything. I, I'm mostly a storyteller. I like telling a story because uh, we don't have the platform where um, you can follow what, what's really going on. Uh, we don't have the TV, so there's a lot of new people that's actually coming to the show. Um, so they don't know what's going on. So my job there is to tell a story. Uh, my job is to entertain you. Um, so I do a little bit of everything. I do a little bit of lucha. I, I could be technical, um, you know, hardcore. You know, I'm not. You know, it all depends on on, on the situation. My opponent. Of course. I switch it up. Um, it, it all varies. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm here to entertain everybody uh, and make sure well, by the end of the night, you know who I am uh, when everything's all said and done. A little bit of everything for uh, something for everybody. Hey, Charlie. But uh, did, would you say the All Star was influenced by any wrestlers that you grew up watching or uh, any, any wrestlers that you're the, the heroes uh, to you? Is your style influenced by anybody in particular or wrestlers uh, in general? Yeah, uh, um, Hulk Hogan. Uh, Hulk Hogan is, was always my hero. He's he's the one that I that I idolized to this day. You know, I, I still love Hulk Hogan. He's he's my favorite. Uh, so yeah, like uh, if you see my emotions in the ring, you, you probably see it on Hulk Hogan. The same emotion character. You, you you'll see you'll see my you see my emotions when, every time I'm wrestling. Um, I can see that now. I can see that I, I, that uh, resemblance to Hulk Hogan, the way you Hulk up and you get yourself psyched up. And uh, yeah, I can see that, Charlie, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, and, um, a little bit of Hulk Hogan, uh, Bret Hart. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I'm mostly cool with the faces. Uh, I like the heels too, but but I'm more of a face guy, you know. Yeah, of course. Now, um, we, we spoke a little bit off air about uh, other promotions that you wrestle for. Now, obviously, CCW is your, your main promotion. That's kind of uh, got a very special place in your heart. But uh, tell us about some of the other promotions that you wrestled for in the Florida area. I know that there's been a few promotions like ACW, FEW, uh, PPW, and, and that's just to name but a few. But you've wrestled uh, throughout the States, haven't you, Charlie? Yeah, I wrestled throughout the states. Uh, NGCW, it's another good one that I like. Um, uh, I've done LAW in New York City. Um, uh, what else? Uh, so there's more coming. Uh, there's MAW in, in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, yeah, yeah, I've done a lot of a lot of companies, uh, and there's more to come. Yeah, and uh, you you show a, a little bit of a desire to kind of maybe step on a plane and come over to Europe and maybe visit us in the UK one day. Is that one of your dreams? That is my dream. That would, that would be a dream come true. Uh, I would love to wrestle in, in, for that UK fan base. Uh, you know, I, I see the, 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 the audience is a little wild. Yeah, I think it's my cup of tea. So uh, I think I would fit in perfect with, with, the, with the Euro crowd. Uh, I would love when it, when it happens, and I'm sure it will happen uh, maybe sometime in 2020. But um, yeah, that's a dream. That would be my dream to, to wrestle in Europe. Uh, I will see South Africa. South America, I've been to uh, Puerto Rico, uh, I've been to uh, El Salvador, Colombia, Colombia was good for CPW, Colombia Pro Wrestling, um, it, that was one of my best experiences, uh, I, I didn't think the, the Colombian crowd would know, know who I was, but um, when, I, when I stepped in the ring, my music stopped, the whole crowd started chanting my hashtag, which is, it's cha-cha time, they were like, cha-cha time, cha-cha time, I stopped. Looked at them like, how do you guys know that? It was amazing. There we go. <laughs> oh, yeah, so you're over in uh, in Colombia then. That's awesome. That's fantastic. <laughs> so uh, t- you, you, one of your biggest uh, championship successes was as the CCW Southern 
heavyweight champion. So you were their champion, the Southern heavyweight champion for 329 days, if I'm not mistaken. So from right. April 2017 through to March 2018, so nearly a whole calendar year. Um, but to, you lost the championship to uh, an individual called uh, Striker Ramirez. Uh, so tell us a little bit about that uh, that epic championship reign as the Southern heavyweight champion for CCW. Uh, nearly one whole year, Charlie. Yeah, um, that title mean, meant a lot to me. I, I think I put value to it, and everyone, after I became the champion, wanted a piece of cha-cha. They wanted to take away my title, and um, and then I, I came across Striker Ramirez. Uh, Striker Ramirez is one of my, my longtime rivals. Uh, he's one of my feuds. Um, you know, we always go back and forward, and, um, and there was that one day where he... He had the advantage, and uh, he defeated me and became the new Southeastern champion. Um, so, you know, I, I give him all the credit, take my hats off for him. He's one of the uh, one of the best ones that we have right now in CCW as well. He is yeah. the heavyweight champion. That's right. He, uh, he's, he's the heavyweight champion currently. That's correct, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, he's the heavyweight champion. Um, I, I was also the heavyweight champion. Uh, we'll go straight to it. I was the heavyweight champion for CCW. Um, something happened where someone kidnapped me, uh, and they stripped me for my title, and they they put it on Striker Ramirez, like uh, out of all people. I'm like, why would they put it on Striker? Um, but yeah, uh, Striker, you know, we, he 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 owes me one, so um, I'm looking yeah. for payback. Well, in, in my research, I, I had you down that uh, there was a, a, a two on one handicap match where you lost your championship, but uh, was that not the case then, Charlie? No, no, no. So um, I got kidnapped. Uh, the title was stripped. They put it on Striker because uh, I, I guess Efron won a battle, won the battle royal where he became the number one contender. So instead of um, um, you know him fighting for the title, they they put the title on him, and and Efron gave it a Striker. And um, so then uh, I, I thought Striker was the one that had to do with this since they put the title on them. I, was, I had a feeling that it could have been them. That kidnapped me, um, so I, I want a revenge. Uh, I was supposed to tag team with my my friend uh, Vince Steele that night, but he couldn't show. He didn't show up. So uh, you know, the man that I am, I was like, you know what? I'll fight both of them at the same time, and and you know, I didn't get the victory. But I have fun with it. It was a hell of a contest. I mean, and, and the footage of you being found um, after the, the kidnap angle is on your YouTube channel. And uh, I think the two, two on one handicap match you just referred to is also on your YouTube channel. So if you're listening to this and you want to kind of see what happened there in that dramatic angle where where Cha Cha Charlie was found, you were bound and gagged, weren't you, Charlie? You know, you were kind of found by a friend of yours backstage. All of that footage is on your, your YouTube channel, of course. Yes. <laughs> there we go. So one thing I want to touch on then, Charlie, is kind of digging a bit deeper into your character. And uh, one thing you love to do with, with, with your fans, sometimes you get your fans involved, is the, is the dance. So you love to do your cha-cha dancing. So uh, tell us what kind of inspired you to, to kind of uh, include the dancing into your routine, into your character, into your gimmick. It's quite an important part of your gimmick, isn't it? It is. I mean, uh, with the name Cha-Cha Charlie, of course. Why you, you, that, you have to dance, right? Uh, so yeah, um, the dancing is involved in a part of my uh, my gimmick. Um, it's a part of my blood as well. My roots, uh, the Dominicans, they love to party, they love to dance. So um, you know, I, I give everybody uh, a little bit of merengue, a little bit of salsa, a little bit of the cha cha, uh, and uh, I give them a little bit of action right after. So um, uh, the crowd loves it. I love it. I'm having a good time. And uh, as long as everyone likes it, I'm gonna keep doing it. And and again, it's in the name, Cha Cha Charlie. So it's only right that I that I dance and celebrate all night long. Oh yeah, ah. oh yeah. So one thing, uh, you were very proud uh, Dominican native. Uh, you obviously love to show your pride and your passion f uh, for your heritage, for your country, both inside and outside of the ring, Charlie. Uh, for those listening um, outside of America, um, here in the UK or across Europe, uh, t tell our listeners uh, a bit more about your, your love and your passion and your pride for your home country. Yeah, um, my, my family, my, my native family, uh, they're from the Dominican Republic. They came to New York City uh, and that's where I was born. I was born in New York City. 
Uh, they went. They moved to a town called Washington Heights in New York City. Washington Heights is, is where there's a lot of Dominicans. Um, so yeah, I'm very proud to be Dominican. Um, um, they have. They support me. They. They. They're. They're part of my my blood. So um, uh, yeah, uh, Washington Heights. I also represent that. Um, it's it, it's all it's all, it, but it's not only about the Dominicans. It's about everybody. It's about it's about you know you guys having a good time uh, and enjoying the show that I put uh, right after. Yeah. So uh, many people know you as, as possibly the biggest baby face in CCW, so the biggest uh, good guy. Um, you have a very close connection with your fans, Charlie, a very close connection. So tell us about uh, what your your loyal fans, your very loyal fans mean to you. Uh, they, they mean the world to me. Um, you know, my my fans, they support me. Um, they're there for my ups. They're there for my downs. Um I, I, if it wasn't for them, I probably wouldn't keep doing this, but they want me to keep doing this. And, and, and this is the reason I'm doing it. Uh, um, I haven't stopped going, uh, I haven't stopped doing this because of my fans. And, um, I, there's been times where I lost and I've seen babies cry, kids cry, even grown men cry. And the, that, that means the world to me, believe it or not. <laughs> so well, that, that it's a passion. You, you've got that connection. and They've bought into you. They've bought into your character. And they obviously love you. So uh, once you've got that connection, you know, there we go. You, you've kind of almost cracked cracked it as a wrestler, I suppose. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and, and, and I, have, I have fans all over. Um, and you can communicate with me on my social media. We'll, we'll give you that in a, in a moment. We will. But, um, but yeah. You message me, I'll re, uh, you know, I'll respond, and um, and from there we could do the chat chat together. Why not? There we go. So keep listening till the very end of the episode where Charlie will give all of his social media plugs. Um, but uh, as you mentioned at the beginning of the episode, CCW uh, recently celebrated earlier on in 2019 its 15th anniversary. It's going to be uh, 16 years old, um, I think, in about a, a March um, of of uh, 2020. Now. During its 15th anniversary, it had a special show, The Rage in the Cage, um, at Coral Springs in Florida uh, back in March. That's right. Now, it was a very special night for you because that was where you captured the CCW Heavyweight Championship. Now, The, the Rage in the Cage kind of, it, it, you know, it, it gives away the secret. It, your, your main event was in a steel cage. And uh, the victory was very, very special uh, for both you and your fans, I'm sure, because you won the match with a frog splash off the top of the steel cage, Charlie. So uh, a phenomenal match, a phenomenal way to win the heavyweight championship. Uh, tell us a little bit about what that moment meant to you because you, you were previously the, the, the uh, Southern heavyweight champion and now you're the CCW top guy. You were their heavyweight champion in the big match, the cage match, that frog splash. What did that moment uh, mean to you? It, it, meant, it meant a lot to me. Um, it, CCW saw something in me and they they were like you know what you're the guy you're gonna become the new champion and and that's what happened um i became the new champion uh, i climbed the the steel cage i could have climbed out and won it but i was like you know what let me do something for the fans let me do something crazy something out of the ordinary and uh and the frog splash from the top of the cage was oh, yeah. one of my biggest uh, it went viral we got a lot, a lot of views, and uh, yeah, that, that 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 day was phenomenal. I will never forget that day ever. Oh, and you've got to see this uh, this frog splash if you if you uh, haven't seen it yet. Uh, go on to Ch uh, Cha Cha Charlie TV on YouTube and see this frog splash. It's phenomenal. Very reminiscent of uh, dare I say it, Jimmy Snooker uh, from that uh, okay. Madison Square uh, Square Garden back go. in uh, '84 or '85, whenever that was. But uh, that's what it reminded me of when I was watching that. Now, uh, thinking back to CCW. Now, um, th there's a few kind of big personalities that have passed through CCW, especially in 2019. I mean, currently you've got uh, former WWE and Lucha Underground commentator Matt Stryker. Now he's one half of the CCW Tag Team Champions, of course. In fact, you've had many top names that have passed through the promotion this year, including uh, Alberto Del Rio or El Petron, uh, Kalito, uh, the great Sasuke, uh, and MVP. Um, how valuable is it, Charlie, to, especially for some of the younger talent that work for CCW, to have these big names come through and to pass on their knowledge and to pass on their wisdom uh, to you and the rest of the CCW uh, younger talent and the locker room in general? Yeah, it's very important. Uh, they uh, they, they 
provide a lot of a wealth of knowledge. Uh, they help us out. Uh, as far as uh, uh, some of the, the, the guys that, could, that come in, like MVP. MVP started with CCW uh, oh. before he went to the WWE. So this is also his hometown. Um, so, you know, for, for him to be a part of CCW is huge. Um, hopefully we could get him in the anniversary show. If not, you know, we'll bring him in. He comes, he comes around a lot. We're actually having a seminar with him uh, pretty soon. Um, and you know, and he does it out of the love, out of out of his own time. Um, he's always giving back to the CCW uh, guys. Uh, that way, they could get better and 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 learn more. Uh, but yeah, we always try to bring someone uh, on our big shows. Um, we've had almost everybody. If you go back, wait when CCW started. You know, Dustin Rhodes used to be the CCW uh, heavyweight champion. Yeah, correct. Uh, yeah, we have uh, Cahagas as a former champion. Um, and, and then we bring a lot of names. Uh, we, we brought in Matt Stryker. He's the current tag team champion with uh, Will Austin, who's a phenomenal. You got to look him up. Uh, Will, the king of flight, Austin. Um, who else? Um, yeah, we just had the great Sasuke all the way from Japan came to be a part of the show. Um, it was magical that night. It was about a week ago. Uh, it was one of the best moments uh, to just to be a part in, in the same arena as uh, the great Sasuke. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Phenomenal. But uh, it is obviously very important when these uh, uh, former big names and uh, you know experienced talent pass through uh, to share their knowledge. So uh, that, that's absolutely fantastic. Now, 2019, I reckon, has been your best year so far. I would say it's probably been your, your best year. Obviously, you were a uh, world champion uh, this year. Um, but uh, one of the kind of standout moments, one of the huge development in your career um, this year has been when you were turned on by your former best friend and former tag team partner, the, the Jurassic juggernaut, Vince Steele. So uh, now th this appeared to uh, be, be an attack completely out of the blue, unexpected, by Steele. What did you feel like to be viciously beaten down by a man you trusted, uh, by a man that uh, was so close to you both inside and outside of the ring? Uh, you must have felt betrayed when that happened. Yeah, it, it was hurtful. He betrayed, betrayed me out of all people, you know. Uh, when we first met, we fought each other. He, he, he came to CCW for the first time. His first match was against me. I defended my Southeastern title at the time against him. It was probably the match of the year, in my opinion. Um, it was one of the best. We told the story. Um, I ended up suplexing him, uh, got the victory. Then, you know, I uh, did my, my celebration, danced with Cha Cha. He danced with me, and then we built the chem chemistry, and we built the brothership. Um, we became a tag team. He sleeps over in my house now every time he comes over here. Um, it, it's, a, it's a relationship where I, even when I go to New York City, instead of me staying in a hotel, uh, I'll stay with him because he, it, it was, you know, it's a brotherhood. Um, for him to betray me was very hurtful. Uh, I couldn't believe he did that. Um, I don't know if it was jealousy. I don't know what it was on his end. Uh, but he attacked me. He hit me with uh, two cannonballs, which imagine getting hit by uh, someone that weighs over 500 pounds. He's, he's a six, big guy. Oh, yeah. But he's a giant. Um, he squashed me that, that one night. Uh, I was hurt. Um, I couldn't move. I was stuck in bed for a whole week. Uh, it was painful. And uh, the only thing I had in mind was revenge uh, on, on the time I... I got to fight him, and revenge is what I got. Revenge is what what it was. Well, speaking of revenge, Charlie, you you, you kind of um, you had this really big match this past weekend. So uh, on Saturday, uh, or well, Saturday the seventh of December, at CCW Season Beatings uh, Annual Show. Now you fought. Uh, former best friends now bitter rival vince Steele um in this in this bitter grudge match now i've seen the match once again it's been posted on your youtube channel it's a hell of a match but uh, it's quite a it's quite a brutal match um i don't think you you let anything go um you you kind of gave him just as much as he gave you you started the match with a dive through the ropes but towards the end of the match a steel chair got introduced into the ring charlie now i think vince Steele brought the chair in but uh, you were the one that picked up the chair and hit your opponent with the steel chair and the referee called it into the match. He disqualified you, Charlie. So uh, give us your thoughts on kind of you must have been there must have been a lot of emotion, uh, a lot of you were highly charged during this match. 
Um, but you, you, you decided to use the, the steel chair not once but several times. Uh, so what, what kind of brought out that emotion and why did you decide to kind of uh, almost attack your opponent in such a, a vicious way, Charlie? Well, well, when he hit, when he attacked me, uh, it was again. I was in a lot of pain. I, I couldn't believe. I was mostly heartbroken than 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 you know physically pain. Like you know, again, he it was almost like a brother. For him to betray me the way he did was was hurtful. Um, even prior to that, someone kidnapped me. Someone uh, cost me my world heavyweight championship, which I worked so hard to get, and. Uh, Right there when I picked up the chair, when I, everything just came into my mind. Everything that, that happened to me, um, it, it, it bothered me. I wasn't happy. And I was like, you know what? The hell with it. The hell with this match. This is my opportunity to get revenge. And once I had the chair, I whacked him multiple times. I had to do it. Um, I didn't do it for anybody else. I did it for me. Um, because again, for emotional and physical uh, distress that he caused me. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are saying online that it's quite uncharacteristic of you, Charlie, and, and possibly might be seeing maybe uh, the, the seeds of a heel turn here from, from being maybe one of the most popular baby faces in the Florida Territory to possibly becoming a heel. Um, any, any truth to that rumor that you might be turning a heel, oh, Charlie? Man. No, not at all. Like, no. uh, no, man, uh, that's not me, man. Uh, that's not all, all. The only thing I wanted was revenge. Uh, that's all I wanted. That's why before the march, the match started, uh, I did a dive. I saw he didn't go down. I did another dive. I saw he still didn't go down. So I went to the top. Um, I did a splash from the top rope all the way to the outside, and I had to bring him down. Uh, with a guy like that, you have to start fast. You have to be quick. You have to be motive. Um, you can't let that guy grab you because once he grabs you, he's gonna hurt you. And um, oh, yeah. uh, and and I know him pretty well, so uh, I knew what to do. I knew what I had in mind before everything started. So uh, that's what I wanted to do. Um, no, I'm not a heel, man. Uh, the crowd started booing me. I was like, wait, you guys booing me? You can't, you can't boo Cha Cha. I love you guys. Uh, but yeah, they were they were booing me, and it, it was it was. Uh, it was a different experience. I wasn't. I've never never been booed. I wasn't used to it. Um, I, I'm sorry to my fans. I'm sorry to to everybody. If if you know if you guys didn't like that, that was not my objective. But my my goal was to get revenge. Uh, and right now I feel a little good. I, I think it's still some unfinished business between me and Vince Steele. Um, but um, I'm sure he's in pain right now with all them tear shots that I gave him. I tell you what I'd like to see, Charlie. I think uh, your next match has to be with Vince Steele, but I think that needs to be inside a steel cage. Uh, think, that, that that would be a good blow off to to your feud with Vince Steele. I think. I would, I would, but uh, how how's a guy like that gonna climb out the cage? He's gonna <laughs> he only has two ways to win. He he has uh, either uh, pinning me or uh, you know leaving the cage. There's no way he's climbing. So I have three ways to win. He only has two. Yeah. Um, so I'd I love to see it. Have to match I, I would love to to have him on a steel cage it's only right you put us two juggernauts in there and uh let the best man win oh yeah but i'm sure your fans will be relieved listen to this podcast uh that, that you that you haven't betrayed them that you haven't turned heel that you're still uh, the baby face that we all love so uh, that that's good news that's good news charlie but uh, so so your career has been about five years um it's, it's quite a quite a short career so far but you've packed so much into them five years charlie and uh, what would you say has been some of your proudest moments um uh, that will live with you forever uh, in your first five years of wrestling what's some of your proudest moments up until now well, you know, as a kid, you know, my, my favorite wrestlers, believe it or not, was Carlito, Caribbean Cool, uh, Alberto, El Patron is one of my favorites. And the fact that, you know, life, life is crazy because down, I, I would have never thought that I would be in the same ring, in the same presence with these guys. Um, I tag team with Carlito, Caribbean Cool. Uh, it was me, Carlito, and Vince Steele. Uh, I helped out Carlito in Colombia on his match. Uh, there, there's been many situations where, where I've been involved with Carlito. Uh, I, I got to face El Patron, Alberto Del Rio, um, 
who's one of my favorites. So the fact that I, you know, I got to fight him, uh, it's it's a, it's a dream come true, and uh, I, I can't believe it. Till I get goosebumps every time I talk about it. It's yeah, amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> and I'm sure 2020 there will be kind of other uh, mind blowing moments, other good memories that you'll take with you from the next 12 months. But uh, one question I've got for you, Charlie, is, is what motivates you as a professional wrestler? What motivates you to go out there and do what you do uh, week in, week out as a professional wrestler? The, the the fans, uh, the, the 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 interaction with them, they they um they motivate me. Um, the kids, my son, my mostly my son. You know, um, before all this started, um, he's five years old, and I have about five years. Um, when he was born, I was I got presented the opportunity to become a wrestler, and uh, you know I want to be his hero. Uh, so when when he looks up. And he says, you know what, my dad is a professional wrestler. He's my hero. Um, he's the one that motivates me. Um, everything that I do, I do it for him. And, um, and, and again, I didn't think I was going to go this far. So now I have a fan base. I have uh, a lot of people that are supporting me. And um, I got to do it for them. And, and most importantly, I got to do it for my son. Superb. And looking ahead to 2020, so uh, with this being a, a Christmas week special for the Wrestling with Jonas podcast, we're already, I'd say, a few days away from uh, from a, a new decade, 2020, Charlie. So what are your plans for the next 12 months? If you have any plans as a professional wrestler, uh, do you have your eyes set on any more championships within CCW or other organisations? Uh, you know, could you possibly go after the heavyweight championship in CCW one more time. I mean, let's be honest, you never lost it fair and square. So uh, you, you you should have that rematch sometime soon. Maybe there's more matches with Vince Steele. But tell us about some of the plans that you maybe have your eyes set on for 2020 then, Charlie. Yeah, 2020, I have a lot in mind. Uh, my job, my goal is to, to wrestle in many places uh, in the United States, in, in UK, if I could go to Asia. Uh, I want to go to different places that I haven't been because, you know, I get to explore. But not only that, I get to entertain uh, a different group of fans. Uh, but besides that, I'm titleless. I have no belt right now. I haven't had a title since I lost it. I feel naked. Uh, normally, I have a belt uh, in some kind of promotion. So 2020, I want to I put some titles on, on, on my waist, uh, on my shoulder. You want some gold? Um, Cause again, I think I look good with a title, and um, you know, celebrating and, and dancing with with the belt is, is the goal, the ultimate goal when when you're wrestling. There and you uh, yeah, so I need some gold around my shoulders right now. There we go. <laughs> Final question, then, Charlie. Final question before we uh, say goodbye. But what, what what would you say is the biggest piece of advice uh, that you've received um, and that's helped you in your wrestling career so far? So the biggest piece of advice, if you can recall that. Yeah, invest in yourself, um, because if you don't invest in yourself, no one else is probably going to do it. Once you invest in yourself, uh, you'll have more eyes on you, um, more glory. So, um, yeah, if you have a little bit of money and this is what you want to do, invest in, in, into it because, you know, get, get yourself some nice gear. Um, um, yeah, invest in yourself uh, if you really want to do this. Um, because again, if you don't invest in yourself, no one else is gonna do it for you. And and, and the sky's the limit. Uh, keep going. Don't stop. There's always gonna be a lot of hurdles. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of problems. Everybody has problems. Um, there's gonna be a lot of setbacks. But um, you know, once you're there, once you're in the ring, once you're in the arena, um, you're focused on that one thing, and um, you know, have fun with it. Why not? Some good advice, some good advice for the listeners and fans of uh, Cha Cha Charlie. So, uh, Charlie, we can't uh, say goodbye to you uh, until you've had an opportunity to throw out any, any plugs, any social media um, uh, plugs, uh, any handles that you want to throw out there so that uh, the fans of Wrestling with Jonas and the fans of Cha Cha Charlie can get in touch with you, say hi, reach out to you. Where can they find you on social media or any other platform? Yeah, so e easy, st easy uh, simple stuff. Facebook is Cha Cha Charlie. Um, send me a message. I'll reply back. You know, I have it on my phone. I have it on my computer. On Instagram, uh, it's Cha Cha Time. Again, I T S Cha Cha Time. It's Cha Cha Time. That's my uh, Instagram. My Twitter is also it's Cha Cha Time. And if you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, Cha Cha Charlie TV, uh, that's the place to go. That's where you'll you'll see most of my stuff. Um, so give me a subscribe. Give me a like. Give me a comment. Uh, I appreciate 
all the love and the support. And and if you got some hate, why not? You know, I appreciate it. As long as you guys are commenting, that's all that matters. I love Indeed, it. Indeed, yeah. And what we'll do is we'll put all of your uh, all of your uh, handles and links in the description to this podcast and YouTube video, so they can just click and uh, see you straight away and say hi. But uh, Charlie, I want to thank you for coming on the Wrestling with Jonas podcast for this special Christmas week edition of Wrestling with Jonas and a very special interview. So thank you, sir, for uh, jumping on board and helping us out with this interview this week, sir. Thank you, John, for having me. I appreciate you. Thank you for doing your research. Thank you for the, the questions. Uh, it was a great interview. Uh, I had fun, and uh, I look forward to, to doing more down the road. Definitely, definitely, sir. So well, we'll have uh, more great interviews coming up in the next month or two, including uh, more collaboration with Turnbuckle TV and IWE UK. Uh, so please keep it tuned to the Wrestling With Jonas podcast for all of your weekly NXT and AEW updates. WWE and AEW pay-per-view reviews and so much more and of course special interviews like the one you've just listened to with Char Char Charlie and uh, if you've enjoyed listening to this podcast please don't forget to spread the word tell your friends and tell your family don't forget to subscribe to the Wrestling with Jonas podcast so you don't miss out on a single episode but in the meantime from myself and from Charlie have a great Christmas have a great new year have a great 2020 thank you for listening and we'll catch up with all of you very very soon thank you guys bye-bye